Joining me now is Steve Hilton, host of The Next Revolution on Fox News. He's also author of the fantastic book called Positive Populism. Couldn't we use a little of that right now? Steve, great to see you. Thank you for being there. I, I, I like the, uh, the ocean background you have there. It makes uh, California look inviting, almost. Um, so yeah. what kills me, by the way, is that, is that now the Biden administration is worried about leaks coming out of the Department of Treasury, coming out of Congress, after they've been leaking all this stuff about the Trump raid, you know, through the Justice Department, the FBI. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? I couldn't believe that. That that's, you know, they have the nerve to use that as the reason. These people, it just shows you, doesn't it, that you just have whatever the specific situation, whether it's the Clinton or Biden, whoever it is, the establishment just looks after its own. And that's, that explains what's going on, the dynamic in relation to Trump and also in relation to Biden. And the important thing that we have to remember every time we talk about this story is that we, of course, we talk about Hunter Biden, but it's really the Joe Biden scandal. Right. It's not about Hunter Biden's personal behavior. It's about the allegation with substantial evidence we now have to support the allegation, including Joe Biden's own words on that voicemail that we, saw, we heard the other week, is that Joe Biden, while he was vice president, was head of a corrupt influence peddling operation mm. involving a hostile foreign power. That is an unbelievably serious potential crime. Yeah. And it's outrageous that the government that Biden heads is now blocking legitimate attempts to investigate that. Yeah, well, particularly when we are, are close to being at war with, with China and, and, and wondering exactly how various members of our government might be exactly. compromised in, in dealing with them. I, I have here the two letters, one letter going to Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, from uh, James Comer, the Republican congressman who's trying to get this information. His letter to her was on May 25th. He said, uh, I should receive a response no later than June 8th. Well, September 2nd, when he got the response, three months late, I mean, it sure looks like there's a, there's a cover-up going on, doesn't there? Absolutely looks like that. And it's looked like that all along. And the media, of course, just row in behind this. That is what's so disappointing. If you're an American, regardless of political party, regardless of partisanship, you want, there to be the, you want it to be the case that no one is above the law, keep hearing that phrase all the time, no one is allowed to abuse their public office for private gain. That's not the way things should work. If anyone does that or is alleged to have done that, they should be investigated without fear or favor. Let's use another cliche that the establishment throw in there the whole time. All those rules, it seems, go completely out the window when you're talking about the Democrats or any member of the right, establishment. Right. Well, the media, you mentioned the media, they're, they're even going a step further in terms of supporting the administration's stance and going further than the president himself did on Thursday night uh, in saying, if you're against us, you're a fascist. I mean, you know, the president tried to, to clean it up a little yep. the day after saying, well, I didn't mean all Republicans, but then he's reverted back. And, uh, but the media is going full bore, saying you have a choice, either, either vote Democrat or you're a fascist right now. What do you think? Thing. Well, it's exactly, that's exactly right, because they take their marching orders from the Democratic Party. It's been like that for a very long time, and it's just now more extreme because the rhetoric is more extreme. But, you know, the reason that I think Biden felt obliged to go into that cleanup mode is because regardless of what you think about the outrageousness of the accusations that he leveled in that appalling speech on Thursday, politically, I think it's going to massively backfire. Because actually, although it may fire up a small proportion of the Democrats' base, I think it's going to fire up Republicans to say we cannot stand by and have this guy abuse his position as president to insult half the country, to accuse them of being fascist, is completely outrageous. One last thing I'd say on this is there's a fantastic piece in the Wall Street Journal today, Lance Morrow, on actually who, who's the real fascist here. It's actually the people in charge, supported by the media, who have come to the view now that any kind of political opinion counter to theirs is just not acceptable. Right, and right. In the even, words even Biden, if it's democratic, by the democracy. way. Let me, there, was a t there was an election in Chile. Usually Americans don't pay much attention to what happens in South America, but 62 percent. 
62% of the Chileans voted against a new socialist constitution there. Time magazine described it this way. They said after a year-long drafting and negotiation process, Chilean voters on Sunday rejected a new constitution that was hailed as one of the most democratic documents in the world. Now, if it was democratic, 62% <laughs> of the people would not be against it. I mean, they have changed exactly. the definition of what democracy is. Well, exactly. It's, it, that's why it's such a great corollary to this story here. Now, apparently, anything that, is, that is, runs counter to the left's um, groupthink is now anti-democratic. Well, the Chilean people gave a massive thumbs down to that and, and very good for them for doing so because they could see that actually this constitution was an attempt to hardwire far-left policies yeah. into the country's constitution regardless of who wins elections. That is the definition of anti-democratic engineering. All right. You've got 10 seconds. Liz Truss, the new PM of, of UK, do you like her? I do like her. I met her when I worked in 10 Downing Street. Here's the most interesting thing about her. When she was at Oxford University, she studied the same course I did. She was a member of the Hayek Society. That is encouraging. That suggests to me she's got very deeply held, philosophically yeah. strong, pro-market views. And we need a bit of that. Friedrich von Hayek was the author of The Road to Serfdom. That's, that's one of the best books that I read when I was exactly. in my teens. It really directed my point of view. Good to see you, Steve. Thank you very much for being here. Steve Hilton, good Thanks, to see David. you.